Get off the road! All right. Hi, I'm Mike of Mike's Road Trip, and on this episode, I feature Northern Germany. I'm road tripping from Berlin to Lübeck, Hamburg, Bremerhaven, Bremen, to Brunswick, and quite a few places in between. So come along with me, let me show you around. As I mentioned, this Northern Germany road trip started in Berlin, where I hung out for a few days exploring the city, while also attending a travel conference. After the conference, I hopped in a rental car and hit the wide open road toward the northern parts of the country. My first destination would be Lübeck, but along the way, I made a few side excursions to drive through a couple of rural villages. When I arrived into Lübeck, I checked into this charming B&B before going off to dinner. One of the many fascinating things I learned about Lübeck is that it escaped World War II relatively unscathed. While they did lose some of the most prominent buildings, nearly 80% of this 12th century UNESCO city survived. I found Lübeck to be utterly charming. Unfortunately, the weather didn't quite cooperate, so I spent much of my time indoors at museums, shops, and cafes. The Hanseatic Museum was one place I spent a fair amount of time. This is a museum that pays homage to the Hanseatic League, a powerful confederation of merchants that dominated commercial activity in Northern Europe from the 13th to the 15th century. From ruins to interactive displays, life-size statues to currency and artifacts, the Hanseatic Museum is a top-notch facility with some captivating stories to tell. Heading farther north, my next destination was to Hamburg, Germany's second largest city. Unlike Lübeck, Hamburg was decimated by the war, but now it's an architectural marvel. One of the most recognizable buildings in the city is the Weston Elfell Harmony, both a hotel and a world-class concert hall. It's also where I would call home for the next couple of nights. The Weston Hamburg is a well-orchestrated symphony of excellence with its remarkable windows that make this structure truly one of a kind. The floor to ceiling windows are custom made in Italy. Each section has both curves and waves, providing a dramatic design element that defies physics. The outward curvature is so significant that guests are able to open and peer out of this port window. While in Hamburg, I went to some excellent restaurants that seem to be redefining a new era of German cuisine. Take for example the newly opened Bianc, a restaurant that will take you on a culinary journey to destinations that will certainly impress the most experienced gourmet. One of the best ways to see the city is with a harbor cruise. Since Hamburg is one of the largest harbors in Europe, there's a lot to see. Hamburg may still be a bit off the radar for some, but that's also what makes it a surprise gem and a city just waiting to be explored. My next destination would be Bremerhaven, but along the way I stopped in Lunenburg and Bremen. Both are places I wish I would have had more time to spend. If you do go to Lunenburg, don't miss Amsanda, a stunning square where medieval merchants laid out their wares. Amsanda is framed by a host of tall, ornate brick houses, which at the time showed off Lunenburg's wealth and status. Somehow, centuries later, these buildings look like they were just constructed because they are so well preserved. The oldest house dates back to around 1400. I spent the second half of my day in Bremen, where I heard some fascinating stories. For starters, this incredible square was spared during the war because locals came together to fortify it from artillery fire. 
And under this opulent building is a wine cellar and restaurant, which has been serving guests continuously since 1405. In my short time in Bremen, I became enamored, especially by strolling these narrow cobblestone streets full of shops and galleries. After a long day, I finally made it to Bremerhaven and was thankful to be staying in this lovely new hotel called The Liberty, which has some pretty great views and cozy accommodations. There is so much to see and do around the Liberty Hotel that I just walked everywhere. It's like a major pedestrian zone, from the Seaside Zoo, Maritime Museum, to plenty of indoor activities during the colder winter months. Because it was pretty windy and chilly, I decided to spend a good chunk of my day at the Emigration Museum, which is located right next to the Liberty Hotel. The German Emigration Museum is located at the very harbor where ships departed. The journey starts at the wharf, waving goodbye from the gangway. More than 7 million emigrants left Bremerhaven between 1830 and 1974 for a new life in the new world. An electronic boarding pass allows visitors to follow the story of an individual who emigrated to the new world. The electronic pass visitors are given activate many audio stations and interactive displays, making the museum visit a thoroughly personal and emotional experience. Individual information and pictures enable identification with the actual person and invite visitors to become more involved with their stories and thus the history. It's really an amazing immersive experience. The next day, the weather was just beautiful, so before leaving for my next destination, I drove around Bremerhaven a bit, before hitting the highway onto my last destination of this northern Germany road trip. En route to Brunswick, I stopped by Sella, a thousand-year-old city with rows of enchanting timber-framed houses. After exploring a bit and grabbing a bite to eat, I continued on to Brunswick. Several people asked why I was going to Brunswick, with an undertone that indicated it wasn't really a tourist area or worth exploring. The main reason I decided to stay in Brunswick was its proximity in between Bremerhaven and Berlin, where I was flying out of. I found Brunswick to be a delightful destination with fascinating facades and magnificent monuments surrounding the city. Despite the widespread bombing suffered during the Second World War, many of Brunswick monuments were fully restored. I visited Brunswick on a Sunday when most of the shops and restaurants were closed, which meant there were not many people around, and I loved having the area seemingly to myself. A rich history has led to centuries of unique construction, from Baroque ornamentation to the modern, such as this colorful Happy Rizzy house, which has to lure Instagrammers the world over. This house just makes you happy. <laughs> you can clearly see where they got the name Happy Houses, as the facade is plastered with colorful cartoons, cheerful faces, and uplifting motifs. I get the sense that Brunswick is an underrated tourist destination, but from my experience, I think it should be on everyone's radar who is doing a Northern Germany road trip. Well, that's it from Northern Germany. Thank you so much for watching, and please don't forget to subscribe for more road trip travel videos. Until next time, we'll see you on the road.